So this video is just going to talk about how require relative works with this idea of scope. So if I define a variable in a file and then I require that file somewhere else, do I have access to that variable? And is the answer different depending what kind of variable is it? If it's an instance variable versus a local variable? And what about methods? If I define a method somewhere else, can I then call that method in a file that's required that file? All these answers and more in right now. So I'm in an empty folder here and I'm going to open up a couple of Ruby files for editing in Sublime. And these are just new empty files. You can uh, create new files by passing the file names that you want to the Sublime command line tool. So what I wanted to check here is if I define a test variable over here in other, and it's going to say, where is Waldo? Then if I try and access that over in main, am I going to have access to that? Assuming that I have required other. So I require relative other, and then I just want to see if I have access to that test variable. So I can say ruby main.rb and we'll see that I get a method error or a uh, a name error. No local variable or method by that name. So the local variables that you create in this other file over here, even though you're still at the ruby top level, those local variables are going to go away and they're going to be separate from local variables that you have over here. So we can say that require relative is going to define a new scope for the code inside the file that it is executing. So if we want this to persist, we can make it an instance variable. So now it's an instance variable on main object. And now we're going to have access to it across multiple files. You can see it says now where is Waldo just prints out fine. So local variables don't transfer, instance variables do. Uh, what about methods? Well, if I define a method over here, hello squirrels, and then I call that method over in main, then that is going to call the method just fine. And that's because instance variables and methods are going to be defined based on what object we're currently on, right? So if I define a greeting here, then this becomes a private instance method of the object class, technically, which means it's available from everywhere. Uh, but basically, anything that I do to the main object over in my other file carries over because the main object is the same between the two files. And we can see that here if we print self and puts self here, then we'll see that it's going to say main up top. Well, I'll uh, get rid of these other two method calls here just so that's not confusing. You can see that it's going to say main both times. Well, that doesn't necessarily prove anything. They could be two main objects that just call themselves main. If I just print main like that, it's going to look like that's the same thing too, right? But um, the self object, the main object, has a unique object ID. And that object ID is going to be the same across both of these files. So we can see that, in fact, those are the same object. So anything that we define on that object, whether it's an instance variable or a method, it's going to be the same for anywhere that we have access to that object, regardless of what file we were in when we defined it. So what's important here is objects, not files.
So we did our little test there and we saw that local variables do not survive after a require relative call, but instance variables, methods, and constants do. And that's because at the top level, self is the main object. So if we require another file, the other file is going to have the same main object. And since both files are dealing with the same main object and the same classes, it doesn't matter what file a method or an instance variable was defined in, it's going to be the same everywhere because we're still in the same overall object space. So we're always working with the same set of objects in our program.